All right, ladies and gents, welcome back to the YouTube. Now, today, guys, we have a very, very, very exciting video. I'm buying a new car, as you probably told from the title. Now, before we head off to Birmingham and go and pick this thing up, let me just tell you about the cars I currently have and why this new car doesn't fit in at all. We've got Boris, who's a Ferrari, I mean, Nissan. This is obviously Japanese. We've got the Mazda RX-8 or the Mazuda, as the Japanese would call it, which is um, quite clearly a Japanese car brand. We have Gareth the Suzuki Jimny, who is from Suzuki, who is Japanese. And finally, we have the hairdresser car itself, the MR2, which, which means something quite rude in French, I think. This is also Japanese. It doesn't really take Sherlock Holmes to figure out what I like in my cars. I love that sweet, sweet Japanese engineering. Now today, we are moving away from my status quo. We are buying a car that is, that's not from Japan, which is a massive shock to probably everyone. So let's hop in Joe's car, head up to Birmingham and pick up this absolute gem. No bed, no bed. So, ladies and gents, we are now on our way. We are on the M40. We probably have about 10 or 15 miles left on the M40. Um, and we're going slightly north of Birmingham. Thank you. Awesome. Sorry. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> <laughs> Nissan Cubes, man. Nissan Cubes are actually. That was cool. They're cool little cars. They are actually so elite. They're so uncool, it makes them cool. Without revealing too much about this car, we're picking it up for 1400 and the guy said he ain't gonna budge on the price, so. And he seems like a really nice guy, so I, I don't really want to haggle too down. We're already getting such a steal on this car. It's it's an inline six, as I think I may have stated earlier, which may give it away to some people. I mean, look, I'll say it's a German car. I mean, it's a German car. I think a lot of people are going to already guess what it is. They've got a few variants. If you say inline six and German, you've got a few different, you've got loads to choose from. Everybody's head goes to the exact same place when you say those two things then. Really? Yeah. I'd go to what I've got. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Might have to go straight to one of them. Yeah, or, or but it's basically, it basically is one of those, just slightly. Okay, slightly we're, slightly we're not even going to say it. Slightly different. People who know what car you have are not going to know what it is now. They haven't got a clue. They oh, do yes, have they a clue. Do. Yeah, we've got YouTube videos on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we will catch up and continue the video once we have arrived at our destination. So um, we will see you not when we're there. So we are almost here, guys. We are looking for number 47 on this road. So we have arrived here. Um, without further ado, ladies and gents, here is the new whip. So ladies and gents, here it is, the E46 325i inline six, 2.5 litre, 190 brake horsepower, drift machine, track machine, daily machine. This thing is an absolute beast. I'm already in love with this car. Now it does need a bit of TLC as you'll see as I take you around it. But overall guys, this car is an absolute steal for 1,400 pounds. This, this car, I'm so excited to start driving this. So I'm really interested, oh, there we go, a bit, a bit stiff. I'm really interested to see what is underneath the bonnet. Oh, <laughs> this is a B50, no, M54, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's an M54. Now, obviously, as per the car throttle ways, the first thing to do is to uh, check for milky residue and do the oil cap. So let's do that now. Oh. We're on to a winner, ladies and gents. There is no milky residue on that. What a beauty. I mean, that is looking that is looking so good. I'm loving the way this engine bay is looking. I love these engines. They just have such a unique tone. I love inline sixes. So, a bit of a stiff handle, but we have a gorgeous gray interior. Bit of a hole there, but we'll, we'll allow that. It's got a bit of wear and tear. It's a 20 year old car. Um, so yeah, we also have a little bit of wear on this uh, armrest as per the carpet is non-existent and it just has kind of a bit, it's a bit dirty on this, which 
has no floor mats, which is a bit unfortunate. We also have a lovely little uh, broken speaker cover, which is also not ideal, but you know what? It just needs a bit of TLC. Um, everything's solid. No, no, it's not. But you know what? Just needs a bit of TLC, guys. Positive mindset is the way you gotta look at this. 1,400 pounds for a car of this caliber is a very, very good deal, even if it needs a bit of TLC. So yeah, the interior needs a bit of work, but at the end of the day, guys, when you're all done in, you can always rely on a Premier Inn. That is just a fact of life, that. So, um, oh, actually, no, 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 before, before I go out and show you other things about the car, where's the key? Here it is. I wanna show you a bit of, a little bit of a miracle, if I'm being brutally honest with you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I... I thought it wasn't going to work then. Boom! Oi! After 20 years of, of, of hard driving for 130,000 miles, the soft top still works. Can you believe it? For 1,004, I am, I'm in shock, but in a good way. That is, and it looks in great condition as well. It looks like it's, be, it's been replaced, definitely. That is, oh, so, so sexual. Although I am going to drive it with the roof down on the way back home because you only live once. So one of the more negative parts of this car, alongside the interior, which needs a bit of TLC, is the fact that some angry person has clearly given this car a good keying. Um, so we do have a few scratches on the boot. This is not gonna come out with a polish, Joe's told me. So uh, yeah, we're gonna maybe either get this replaced or repainted or something. I don't know what the solution is yet, but um, that is gonna have to get sorted. This is going to be a clean car when we're done. Another thing I wanna point your attention to, ladies and gents, is these wheels. I mean, this one's missing the, uh, the dust cap at the minute, but at the end of the day, when you're all done in, you can always rely on a Premier Inn, and we have some gorgeous wheels. These look a little bit like BBSs. I, I, obviously, they're not, but they look very nice, and I, I think we'll probably refurb these and keep them on the car um, because they look very, very good indeed. The tyres, however, are a bit bold. Um, they'll be all right for the way back home, but actually this one isn't too bad, but the, the rest of them are, are in dire need of a replacement. So we're gonna get that sorted out. Oh yeah, dust cap on there isn't on. I mean, that's not a dust cap, that's a center cap. Oh God, I said that wrong. But yeah, dust cap on there isn't on. Center cap's on that one. Tires need replacing. Um, grill, ooh, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. You know what? It needs a bit of love, as we've seen, but it is a good car for the money. The mechanical side of this car is great. As we saw, no milky residue, the soft top works, the interior needs TLC, as does the exterior, but guys, I can't lie, I'm completely and utterly gassed with this car. I'm so excited to drive it home. So without further ado, let's get the GoPro set up and take this for a first drive all the way back home. Let's go. So, ladies and gents, let's uh, just put the... Uh, the roof down on my gangster whip. Yeah! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm a bit cool. I know. Don't mind me. Should put my should put my roof down with electronics. Oh yeah, unflap out. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm in love. Oh, I'm a car. All right, let's go. Inline six, smooth as ever. I haven't been this excited since I bought my MR2. And that was a year, year two years, a year and a half ago. Where am I going? Oh God, I, I don't know where I'm going. Right, okay, I'm going right. So something that I've immediately noticed is decent throttle response. <laughs> oh, and it has that inline six. I don't know, man. If you do, you know what an inline six sounds like. You've heard enough BMWs. It has that just lovely tone. Uh, but a bit of a negative is that the, <laughs> the driver's side window button has just come off. Which again, bit of super glue. Nothing, nothing. A bit of super glue can't fix. The, the gear selector feels like it needs a bit of maybe he's replacing. I might get a little short shifter in there. And oh my god, right? You can't see what I'm doing at the minute, but. I'm in third gear and it feels like I'm in neutral. That is gonna do my nutting. I think, yeah, the gear selector is, is had better days, I think. Steering's quite heavy, but I, uh, Joe Tot tells me that's just what these old beamers feel like. So I'm all good with that. Oh, it's so comfy. I've got the wind in my hair or wind on my hat. I'm living life. Oh, what more do you want for a daily? 
This is brilliant. I've, I've got an airbag light on, which is a, a bit disconcerting. Temps are looking good. All the gauges work, unlike Joe's Beamer. And it's just a nice place to be. That's the way I'm gonna describe it, because it's the most basic way to describe an interior of a car, but it's a nice place to be. I feel safe, I feel comfortable. It feels like I'm wafting about. I mean, I'm used to all of my cars with their BC coilovers in the hardest setting. This is like I'm riding on a cloud. I love it. I love this car already. Brum. Definitely has lost a few horses though. <laughs> this thing feels, doesn't feel the quickest. They drop it to third. Yeah, does not feel like 190 horsepower at all. It feels like 150 if I'm being honest. Um, maybe it's the weight of the car. Overall though, what a buy. What a buy. So after a quick stop at the services to refuel and to get the roof up, we were back on the road. Yeah, we're just getting into the toll now. I've got to pay seven bloody quid to get through here, which is a bit annoying. Oh, a little burnout. Oh, it's going to burn out so easily. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, window down, please. Uh, the window buttons. Okay, we've been all of them. Oh, it's such a low f ah, I can't reach. Ah. <laughs> I can't reach. Oh, I took my seatbelt off. Uh, uh, okay, I'm through. Seatbelt back on. Card in wallet. I just flashed my whole number. I'm gonna have to blur that, right? Burnout. Okay, no burnout. Oh, it's got traction control on, that's why. Boring. Oh, Joe's having problems, oh no. Oh God, Joe's not through the toll yet. Eh, uh, that sounds like a him problem. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a problem for Joe Plester to figure out, not me. So me and the BIM made it back safe and sound to the unit. Um, a couple of things I didn't actually mention beforehand was that we do need to get new badges because those are a bit degraded. We also have a humongous crack in the, in the windscreen, which is definitely going to need a whole new windscreen, which is probably going to be quite expensive. But overall, the car drove so well on the way back. It's smooth. The inline six is so smooth. Smooth. It's actually really comfortable. The ride is nice and comfortable without suffering on the performance side. It does feel a little bit floaty. Now, for the people who are wondering why on earth I bought one of these, I actually bought it because I'm selling this MR2 soon. Um, and the reason why I'm selling it is because, as some of you know who follow my Instagram, I'm going to be trying to put a K20 in Boris. Now, that obviously requires quite a few funds, which I can get out of this. So, as this is my daily driver, I need something else to replace it, which is where this comes in, the £1,400 absolute bargain 325i, which has a pretty similar power output to that. So, it's it's a pretty much a no-brainer. It's more comfortable, it's more dailyable, it's more practical, and it's fast, and it's a drift car. So uh, yeah, let's get this in the unit, and we're gonna get it on the ramp, and we're gonna see what's underneath it, and see the condition of everything under the car. So let's go into it. So, ladies and gents, what is underneath this E46? And the answer to that is quite possibly the cleanest E46 in the whole entire world. Let's start with this rear section. We have the rear muffler for the exhaust. Again, it is completely standard, not modified, unlike somebody's E36, which has a horrifically welded straight pipe. Not gonna name names. So we also have, um, obviously, the fuel tank, clean as hell. We've got this kind of section on the sill, which is so clean, you could probably eat your dinner off it if it was upside down. The same goes with the other side, zero holes, fuel lines look absolutely perfect. We've got our two resonators, absolutely perfect. Actually, no, those are our cats. Our resonator is up here. Um, and those are, again, perfect. You can literally read all the writing on it. It is so clean. Everything is so solid under here. I actually can't believe it. This car was 1,400 pounds. I mean, wheels, solid bearings, wishbone, solid, tie rod ends, a little bit bendy, which is what you want. Um, we have, Nice plastic under tray. Our fuel filter, sorry Joe, is protected by a lovely piece of plastic, unlike Joe Z36. We have, again, solid wishbone. Again, slightly bendy tire rod end, which is one. Solid wheel bearing, bushings look good, exhaust looks good. Absolutely zero rust. Guys, this car is so mint, I actually cannot believe it. There was so much cosmetic, cosmetic stuff letting this car down, but mechanically, and underneath it, it is so good, it's actually hard to believe I got this for 1,400 quid. So um, yeah, we do still have our work cut out because there is a lot of stuff that needs doing, but I am very, very happy because 
because it's not going to be that expensive. Other than that though guys, that is all for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of this E46. I think not only have we got a bargain, but the car itself is so sick. It's actually a really good conditioned car if you look below the surface. I mean, it has a few imperfections like the keying and the crack in the windscreen, but oh, overall it is unbelievable. So yeah, make sure to smash that like button, click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as I said, make sure to let me know in the comments what you think of my car and I'll catch you guys in the next video.